Hello and welcome to Nine Inch Charge. Well, it feels like Warhammer the Old World has been out for a little while now. Uh, Tom and I have played a game. Dice have been rolled. Uh, there have been plenty of battle reports up for us to watch. And the meta is starting to emerge. So Tom and I wanted to do a video today telling you the takeaways um, from our game that we played and also what we think is emerging as the new meta, uh, what's in, what's out. We've got some hot takes. Firstly, we're going to talk about what are the big changes to the game. Things like no step up, um, initiative bonuses for charging, strength and armor piercing not being linked, all these kinds of things. The big changes from 8th edition and what they mean for this new edition and how you can get yourselves ready um, you know, to fight in this new age. And then we're going to talk about list building and what things strike us about how you should be creating your armies and things you have in mind for that. Um, bearing in mind there haven't been any tournaments yet, Square Hammer has a tournament coming up just around the corner, Cursing Games has got an event coming up at a thousand pointer, Tom and I have signed up to Greetings from the Warp which is in the summer, but as soon as the tournaments are up there we're hoping to get some guests on as well to talk about their tournament experiences, but until then this is the things that I guess that we have noticed from our own games and from watching games. So, number one, the big changes. Let's, let's get straight into the big changes. No step up. In our game, that was, that was pretty big, no step up, wasn't it, Dan? Mm. I remember a few, few, few times when your, um, your tree kid got the jump on a unit and they were already difficult to wound. And they were just churning through elves like it was butter. but And not being able to attack and do stuff back was really difficult. Yeah, so I suppose that feeds into a bit with initiative bonuses for charging. So if you charge and you, you are going to get up to plus three to your initiative, which means you're going to strike first. And then if you wipe out what the enemy has got in their front rank, they're not going to be able to attack back. And that means they're just relying on their static combat resolution, which would be... Um, you know, have you got a banner? How many ranks have you got? Um, and that's pretty much it. So that change now is huge, really, for initiative and for movement, because movement means you're going to get that charge, and initiative means you're going to strike first. And that's pretty much where we are. We're like it's like we're back in sixth edition now. Tom, you're just a, a youngling, so you won't remember sixth edition. <laughs> no, I don't. And and what it's like to be charged by Jeremy's cold on nights and completely obliterated and not being able to strike back. But that is um, that's you're going to enjoy that with your Bretonians because that's pretty much where we are. Um, to the point now that when I'm looking at list building, I'm looking through magic items. Like one of the things that I would look to take is. How can I increase my unit strength? How can I increase armor piercing? Now I'm looking at things like the potion of swiftness. How can I increase my initiative? Especially mm. with the Tomb Kings, because the Tomb King's character, if he gets charged, or, in, or if you're in the second turn of combat and you haven't got the charge, your initiative drops right down. You're going to get struck first. So finding ways to increase your initiative through spells and things like that are really key. And in a lot of the battle reports that I've watched, it just turns out to be that if you've got high movement and high initiative, those are the armies that tend to win. Yeah, I've seen that with a few myself, and <clears throat> a few of them did involve Bretonia because I'm doing Bretonian, uh, Bretonia, so I was quite biased on which battle, battle reports I was watching, and they are devastating on the charge. Mm. Like they really hammer things home when they get the charge in. Yeah. So I guess there are things to remember is that now one of the other changes is that you can't break a unit as easily. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've got this thing now where units fall back or give ground rather than just just break. Um, it's quite difficult to break a unit. They have to fail their natural leadership. The exception to that is if they are outnumbered um, over two to one. So if you're if you charge in and you've got a really big unit of knights and they're all unit strength two and then by the end of the combat you outnumber them over two to one then you then it's easier for you to break a unit but if you don't you are going to end up in a longer combat and then after that you can't use your lances and things like that so that's definitely something to think about you know i'm looking at units 
I guess we're kind of jumping towards into list building now, but I'm looking <laughs> at units that come in and hit hard and deal the damage. And then the second thing I'm thinking is, what is their unit strength? Because how long am I going to be stuck in this combat? Because if I just make them give ground a couple of times, then I'm open to flanks and things like that. So that's another big change, isn't it? As to how, how units react um, and how many combats you get into. But I suppose the thing is if you make a unit give ground you don't have to follow up you can, you can hold yeah. and reform and then go and charge into something else <laughs> yes ultimately it's a game at the end of the day it's a game of victory points so if you get enough just for the victory points you might want to go into something fresh instead of following up mm. and that's the thing as well isn't it is that we we were expecting that maybe there would be more play around objectives and there isn't. So yeah. one of the things that I always used to think in Warhammer Fantasy Battles is looking at, you know, is looking at efficiency of your unit. So for every point that you spend, you want that point to take more points of your opponent's army. Yeah. Because that's ultimately what's going to come down to. Can you kill the general? Can you capture the banners? And and can you kill more of their army than they are going to kill of yours? So you're going to look at efficiencies. You're going to look at matchups and, and things like that. Yeah. And there were, and the and there might be some units in your army that aren't going to make that. So, for example, skeleton warriors in my tomb kings, they probably won't make their points back in terms of pure combat damage, but they can hold people up and stall people and wait for things to get round. So there is utility as well. But I think on the face of it. You know, your army just has to do more damage than the opponents. Yes. There's one thing we, we're not too sure on yet, I suppose, in the tournament scene, Dan, is there is a, a, a subset of rules regarding objectives and terrain pieces. And if you hold them at the end of the, ter the game, you get a set amount of victory points. Yeah. So it could be that they start playing around with that to add another dynamic. And some of the terrain pieces give you buffs throughout the game. Yeah, that's true. So there is that in Watchtower. You do get more points yeah. for being closer to the Watchtower and having more units there than, than your opponent. Um, but the thing that's common in all of the games is the is the kill points, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So with, with that in mind, Tom, I mean, if we're talking about no step up, initiative bonuses for charging, strength and armor piercing not linked, and 50% outnumber means you break a unit what are you looking at in terms of list building around that so i'm looking at how do i get that charge off mm. bretonian is quite simple with bretonia uh, everything's very quick everything's got a lance and the stuff that doesn't is pretty much just there to be a chaff get in the way or stay back and you know, let the big boys do the actual fighting. So um, there's a few banners in the Breton... There's a, a banner in the Bretonian list that gets you to re-roll the charge, I believe. Um, so it's just things like that. What I really want to do is get in, charge, hit first, break a unit, get into the next thing. I don't want to do prolonged combats because that's where Bretonia, like in eight, they fell over. Mm. So does that mean that you are more tempted to take the larger units that you know you get that outnumber? That's the challenge, right? I think because knights are quite expensive, um, a unit of 10, it's not only expensive regarding points, it's also a very big footprint. And if you disrupt the lance, it, it's very combat ineffective. And I think it will crumble very quickly so i've seen lots of units of six and they perform very well but you have to multi-charge things mm. you know if someone's got you like your big block of skeletons i'll win the combat probably every turn so i and you're going to have the frontage where i can multi-charge it so yeah. two units probably another big scary gribbly hero mm. will go in try and break it in the first turn or the second turn and then move off mm. For me, fighting against you, um, you know, I'm I'm thinking, how do I stop you from getting those charges? How do I slow you down? How do I reduce your 
um, your combat ability and whittle your units down before they reach me. So things like shooting magic missiles are important, um, debuffs if I can get them, and then things like there are spells that block line of sight, so then you won't be able yeah. to declare a charge in the first place. Stuff like that is what I'm looking at to kind of combat that, um, and then and then utilizing things I've got in my force. You know, my what else I've got? My wild riders. Um, to get the charges where I where I want them, um, you know, it's that's definitely definitely the biggest thing I think is: do you have the movement? Do you have the initiative? And then do you have the damage to to win the combat and then potentially break, yeah. break your opponent? That we're going to see a lot of that. So we're going to see a, cavalry is is definitely going to be king. Um, we're going to see. A lot of monsters so dragons are already being mentioned here there and everywhere i've just written a wood elf list that includes two dragons um which is a bit um bit filthy but um you know playing around with lists and seeing what i can fit in and what i can do um you know there's a lot of talk of these high elf dragons and these chaos dragons two plus armor save really mobile and um and ward saves and regen and things like that as well um the other thing again about these big monsters that are now that we're seeing more of is their unit strength is very high so the unit strength is that is the number of wounds that they have so the wood elf dragon has nine wounds when it's got a lord on it um that means you've got unit strength nine so to be outnumbered you know they're going to have to have 19 models now i don't think that's very likely at the end of a combat once you've been in with a dragon after it's stomp attacks <laughs> the lord's attack that you're going to have 19 models left so you're not going to be able to to break it the smaller monsters one of the things we found in the game for example the tree man he did very well in the game um, don't get me wrong, but he's got a limited number of attacks compared to a dragon. And because his unit strength is his wounds, it's only five. So if he's against 11 men, which he was, and he loses a combat, you know, potentially he could flee. Um, this is why these bigger monsters, are we going to see an emergence of them um, more and more, I think. And they're just really difficult to deal with. You know, We're talking about the meta and what can you do against against these these monsters i don't know how i will chew through you know a toughness seven monster that's got a two plus armor save a five plus ward and a five plus regen um yeah i don't know what the answer to that is just yet. i don't think it's as simple as taking cannons either that's no. um i think cannons cannons are a lot more limited than they what what they used to be because it's not just d6 wound strength 10 it's 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 a less it's a fair few less wounds so yeah, I think you will still see artillery pieces in the game. Um, one of the things that we were talking about um, was um, was characters. And I guess we can talk about artillery and characters because mm. we used, in our game we played, we each had a level two mage and we used them quite differently and the outcome was quite different. So why don't you talk us through that, Tom? Yeah, so... I very much used my level two mage in a traditional sense, um, as if I was playing eighth edition. So I left it in a bunker where it was going to be safe. No one can get to it unless they wanted to direct attacks at the mage. Um, however, you played it more like a lone character in a game of 40k. And it was like creeping behind the army, slowly moving up. Um, but it meant as soon as I got into combat, my mage was rendered pretty much ineffective. So it couldn't cast any of its spells out. It had one spell that was the range of self that you could cast in combat. But your mage, every turn, didn't have to worry about that. Yeah, so if you are a lone character and you are next to a unit of five or more of the same type that you are, the same infantry type that you are, say, um, you can't be picked out. Um, by shooting attacks um we're, we're still kind of debating whether or not the cannon can can pick them out because you can't the cannon doesn't target a unit it targets a point on the ground and then it goes so i think a cannon and you could probably get, still get clipped by template weapon and things like that yeah. um but, but you can but, choose it as its target it might scatter on yeah 
for a magic missile for shooting all those kinds of things you can't target it so and also if your mage bunker gets captured and it gets wiped out that's your mage bunker gone and your mage gone so mm. i played it a bit differently um to how you would traditionally play warhammer fantasy and the payoff was, was much better so i think we are going to see more lone characters and you could also do this for characters who are combat characters you could have a lone character come up next to a unit and the unit gets charged a combat character can go in the flank or do do what they like they don't necessarily have to fight you know there. so um i think lone characters is a thing that we're definitely going to see um i mean i've been looking at especially for the damage they do and the speed they've got and that now that you know you're not going to cannon them off so one of the things that i've been looking at you know when i'm looking at dark elves with jeremy is the pegasus lord with full plate mm. um, and a shield there you know they were a good thing back in eighth edition but they're even better now because tom isn't just going to ping it off with his cannon in the first turn <laughs> it's going to get it's going to get across the table um and it's going to take damage. full plate yeah oh see it's just janky elves just getting to do what they want that is and a sea dragon cloak well, yeah. What what does that do when it's at home? Oh, we're getting off top. It gives you an extra bonus to your save for saving oh. uh, for shooting. Well, let's not get off topic. <laughs> um. So yeah, these lone characters are going to be really important, especially as they're going to get the charge, and you know they're going to deal a lot of damage. You can give them magic weapons. They can do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, they're going to be great for chaff clearance. They're going to be great for um chasing artillery pieces getting into back lines and um, picking out other mm. characters all right so what do you think about magic tom in this new edition how did that go in our game so well, in our game um from my perspective it was very ineffective um maybe if i remembered i was casting spells so i cast oak and shield on my unit quite a bit and i think i rolled the dice twice for it <laughs> Um, but yours was very effective. So your ability to shut down my magic. Yeah, so I, I took a high mage and I had yeah. drain magic. And that meant that I could create an area of debuffing against Tom. And certainly against a low level mage, um, like a level two, that's quite devastating because it's already a li that little bit more difficult for them to, yeah. to cast those higher level spells. Um, magic... Playing in every phase of the game is really is really good. I think there are certain laws that are better than others. We are going to do a, mm. a, a kind of a law ranking video um, where we put them in different tiers. Um, <laughs> but certainly, um, magic missiles are very powerful, um, and there are lots yeah. of access to magic missiles. Ruby Ring of Ruin is a really great item. Um, yeah. It's emerged, and um, there are some really good buffs and debuffs, um, but they are a little bit more difficult because um, not all of them can be cast into combat and they do a lot of things that you would want to happen in combat. So you've got to be yeah. a little bit more careful. I, with I think to get the most out of those spells, you really have to understand the the whens and wheres to cast the spell and kind of really have your, your mechanics dialed in. But I think there's a really good opportunity to build just a damage dealing mage and then throw a ruby ring of ruin on it and dish out a heck of a lot of damage um yeah i'm myself i'm working on a three fireball list yes um for chat was doing it um because i've got a unit that can pick a spell from battle magic then i can take the ruby ring of ruin then i can take a wizard that potentially can have another magic missile so yeah there's there's things like that in the game that you know especially if you get this magical dominance um you're you're going to be able to start to pick apart someone so i do think that um people are going to take level fours i think you're going to see them because otherwise you will be you will be left behind now it's funny because at warhammer world i was chatting um to luca from mini wargaming he i think he said he was about 15 games of the old world in and he said that he felt a level two could still compete against a level four and still have something to say and still get some spells off but i think if we're talking about the meta and the, and the sort of super competitive edge of it if you want to make sure your spells are going off you are going to take them yeah I think some of the, the casting values on the better laws, you know, your nine pluses, 
I, I probably wouldn't be taking a level two for that. Mm. You want a level four, probably with an additional bonus to cast somehow. I think there is one that gives you plus one. There is well, a magic yeah. items for that. Yeah, and I it, I just wouldn't mess around with that risk. There's two dice. You want every bonus you can get. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, and I think the last thing uh, we want to talk about before we just go into just speculating um, early list building is um, is line hammer, um, which is the emergence of you know steadfast. Now is kind of built in. Um, for those who don't know steadfast, um, it it basically meant you were less likely to run away if you had more ranks. Um, but now that isn't the case. So ranks will still give you a bonus to combat up to a bonus of two, but everything in the front rank attacks. So if I've got five men and I've got them in two ranks, um, the most I can get is five attacks. But if I have them in one rank, I can get ten, I can get 10 models fighting in combat. And then potentially I could do another couple of wounds. So there's no real point in having the ranks. Um, so now we are seeing units deployed longer. Also, you can't shoot into ranks. Um, you know, if you if you've got volley fire, half the second rank can shoot. So there's less incentive there for shooting as well to to have ranks. So a lot of armies are being strung out. Um, the aesthetic of it isn't very Warhammer Fantasy. Um, you don't have your regimented block so much. You've got a wider frontage. Um, I think that in a lot of battle reports uh, we've been watching, people are still taking units in blocks. I mean, our game, um, Tom, you played it, as you said, kind of traditionally, where you had your yeah. mage bunker and you had your blocks. You weren't found out so much. I think this is a symptom of people who have played lots of Warhammer Fantasy Battles now playing Warhammer The Old World. And actually, Warhammer The Old World doesn't play the same no, entirely. It, it's not the same game. I think I think it's the, the step-up rule and the you can always attack if you're in the engagement ra engaged rank. I think that's where that issue comes from. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to play Linehammer. Personally, I'm throwing it out there, Dan. But th th just to highlight what it th what it really is. So, like, a unit of dwarf quarrelers with great weapons are 110 points. So you can deploy them in a unit of 10 wide. You can fire as you, you're, uh, the enemy marches towards you. And then when they get in and charge, any model that's left over in in that front rank or that only rank gets to hit you back with a great weapon, which will be devastating. <laughs> yeah, I think it's that you is is that if you could, if they had a front of five, you might be able to kill five, but killing ten is very difficult. So it just, it difficult. just guarantees you pretty much that you're going to be able to strike back. Um, and you know, to be honest with you, I prefer it when models could step up, just yeah. because. It means that if you get charged and you take a load of casualties, you can still interact in the game. And, and this is still a two player game. And it makes it feel like I'm going to charge you. I'm going to wipe out your front rank and you're not going to have any interaction until you roll your leadership test. Yeah. And I don't think that's fun. Um, if I'm honest, and I know we're not talking about that strictly this video, and we're talking about yeah. the meta, um, but that's where the meta's going. Yeah. So if you string your men out and they're 10 wide instead of 5 wide, you'll get to strike back and you'll get to interact. If you cause a couple wounds from doing that, it's the same as having two ranks. So you might as well not have your ranks. You might as well get involved in the combat and start swinging, swinging your great swords around. Yeah. Um, and that's where line hammer comes from. So we are going to see that. The thing is, though, is that models are on bigger, bigger bases now. So that you're going to take up more room. When you charge, you have to pay for your wheel. So if you've got a bigger frontage, you're going to have more to wheel, more distance to go. Um, so it can cause you disadvantages in terms of maneuverability. Because if you've got a very yeah. wide footprint and you want to move up the table, you are, you know, you are just mm -hmm. going to want to move up the table. I mean, one of the things that we spoke about previously before the game came out was what potentially will they do to address a horde style unit 
overrunning or coming up against a piece of impassable terrain. And it's still quite complicated. You can now you can now maneuver a bit easier by spending like a quarter of your movement and a half your movement to, to make turns and things. But yeah. it's still quite janky, but it's it that doesn't save you on the charge. That wheel is going to cost you your charge range. And um, yeah, right unless range. you it makes you means you fail the charge. Yeah. Right. So, but in in that case, it doesn't matter if all of your models are in base contact or not, because they all get to attack. Yeah. Yeah. True. The only, the only way the reason it matters is if they've got multiple attacks on their profiles. So, mm. I don't know many that do really. Um, Savage orcs, maybe, because they are frenzy. Mm. I guess the other thing I want to say is about strength and armor piercing not being not being linked as they were. Um, I actually now think that armor piercing is probably more valuable than strength. Um, whereas before, you would always increase your strength to get your better wounds and to and to fight against these ones, these these models, and then you begin to chip through their save. There's going to be a lot of models that we're flying around, like this, um, the Chaos Dragon. <laughs> Yeah, but not just the Chaos Dragon. There's going to be a lot of night meta. There's going to be a lot of cavalry. There's going to be, you know, yeah. demigriffs are really devastating, but actually they're only toughness four. So more importantly than being able to wound them, you can wound them all day long. If they've got two plus armor save, you're not going to do any yeah. damage. So more, you know, I would take chipping your um, chipping your armor save down and wounding on a four or five instead of a three or a two because I can wound you on a two. Fine, you've got two plus armor save. I haven't done anything. So you need both, um, but I think that armor pe penetration is more important because you are more likely to come across something with middling toughness than you are a dragon. There's only going to be one or two big dragons. Having said that, you are going to come across a big tough dragon. Yeah, it's it's just by that sweet put spot, isn't it? So. I think if you're wounded on a five plus, it's going to be very difficult to get enough wounds through, even with good armor piercing, to do the required damage. But if you're wounded on a two plus, you can get all the wounds through. But if they're saving on a two plus, you probably might fail one. So you probably want to get to about a four plus with a bit of armor piercing. I think the razor standard might come back. Hmm. Might be quite a strong choice for some units because it's armor bane one. I'm two. Sorry, being two. Sorry, then that's that's quite strong. Now it takes my knights from a three up to a five up. Only if you wound on a six. Oh though. yeah, but it's so better it's not, than having nothing. It's not as powerful as it used to be. Yeah, it is better than, than than having nothing. I think, but yeah, I would say armor piercing and initiative are the two that I'm looking at. Yeah. and then I will have some high strength things in the army somewhere, and then it's about getting those matchups. But for your ordinary matchups. Movement initiative armor piercing, yeah. I guess. In I think uh, great weapons are really good now. If you if you can get a unit with great weapons and you can get it into the position where it's going to get its charge, they could be absolutely devastated. Because mm. you go down to a, the initiative one, and then you apply your charging bonuses. So yeah. you could be striking back up to initiative four. Yeah. All right, so why don't we have a think about list building and, and what we think should be included or not, and just in broad senses. So one of the things we are going to do on the channel is we're going to have guests um, coming on who are kind of experts in their army field. Um, so we're going to look at all, diff all the different armies um, with guests and talk about what's yeah. good in, in that specific army and then look at some, some lists. But I guess for general rules writing... I would say let's let's start with heroes. And so I think you're going to want to take the biggest, nastiest thing that you've got in your list <laughs> straight away. If yeah. you've got a dragon, if you've got a hippogriff, you know that's going to go in. If you've got a hero, you, you and you can take something like a Pegasus and put full plate on a hero. I think that's a good secondary choice for not a lord level character, but a hero level character. Um, I think if you want, you know. To control the magic phase and you've got a lot of magic missiles um, a level four is going to be a must if you can take them on a dragon or a manticore or something like that much the better um, if you can't definitely consider the lone character choice because they mm. can't be targeted um, and and then 
the only thing to say is I did write a list. I said I wrote a two dragon list, and that meant I couldn't have a level four. I could have a level two, and I haven't quite decided if taking an extra dragon is worth losing the level four. I I would. I I would take that extra dragon sometimes, just because there isn't that much. There are I've not seen any cataclysm level spells, right? So there's no like rolling over someone's army with a template and removing your models for fun. Mm. So I think by the time they've done sufficient damage to your army with magic missiles, you're in both of those flanks of the mage bunker anyway, and you're eating that mage for breakfast. Yeah, um, I guess the thing to say is if you're taking a level two wizard or a lower level spellcaster, have a look through your book, see if there's something you can take that um, that allows you to dispel a bit better. Um, mm -hmm. So in that build, um, there's a wood elf item that means you can roll 3d6, pick the highest for your dispels, um, or you might be able to take a dispel scroll or something like that. Um, and then that way you're still negating that level four if you're not going to take one by going um, mm. absolutely brutally into taking two dragons. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think when you are picking your units, you know, your core special and rare units, you are going to be thinking about facings and you're going to think about how much space they're going to take up on the board and your deployment and where they're going to go. And you're and you're going to have less space to do that because you are going to be stretching them out. Now, I still think I, I'm not purely into line hammer of everything just goes in one rank. I'm still, I still think I'm going to have a second rank, at least one. Um, but I am going to go wider, but that's something that I did before. Um, all my units were seven wide and three deep in, mm. in a, in eighth edition, in eighth edition, right. but whether or not, in your book. Yeah. But whether or not I go even wider and then just too deep, um, that's something definitely that I'm going to consider. I think line hammer works with very specific units, right? Um, I think if it's quite an elite infantry unit with a great weapon, for instance, um, even your, your lower level dwarves, it works well with because you want something with a quality attack to hit back. If it's yeah. your low level skeleton, I'd be looking at like, how many can I fit in? How many do I really need in my list? So 40, mm. I might just take a big target of 40. You're never going to have anything that dwarfs that unit strength, probably until the end of the game to make it flee. And, you know, skeletons probably the bad example, but men at arms, yeah. if I take 40 in a unit, <clears throat> you need, it's going to be a few turns till you whittled it down enough till you can break it. Yeah. Yeah. So you could, there are still, I guess, yeah, options for tar pits and they're worth having, yeah. having a look at, depending on what you're, on what you take. As your core there's a lot of things are one plus and, and then you yeah. have to have those thoughts i think once personally once i'm out the way with my core i am looking at now what's the thing with the high movement mm. and and combat capability that i can get that charge in and then i'm thinking what is their unit strength going to be and how long will it take me in conjunction with shooting and magic before I make that charge and I break that unit. Yeah. Like traditionally in eighth, it was about turn three before you sent your wild riders in. Turn three, turn four, and then your wild riders were playing mop up. Yeah. I think it'd probably be the same. It depends if people are running smaller MSU lines. Hmm. Because you think if you look at a line, you might just think, actually, my wild riders can take that. Yeah, because you're right. Because other than there. other than a tar pit, there isn't that incentive now to take big units because you're yeah. not going to get your horde rolls. You're not going to fight in any extra ranks. You know, you there isn't that incentive. So we are going to see smaller units, and then that's where if you take a larger unit of cavalry. So if I took ten wild riders, I have to have unit strength twenty. Then I've got to kill you down to nine men, and I outnumber you. Um, and if you are a smaller unit of 15, or like you said, like the 10, the 10 dwarves in a line, that's going to happen very quickly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you yeah. Hit, I, hit those dwarves like a truck. <laughs> <laughs> and they won't know. Yeah. So that's, um, that's the thing to think about. 
there, I suppose. Um, it's really interesting that that is the way things are going. Um, I do have a couple of lists, actually. Um, I just, I'll just try. Yeah, you do have some good lists, you wrote. So maybe I'll just share, share a couple. Share us a list. Um, all right, I'll share you one of the so, lists that I've been playing with. These are um, lists you're planning on taking to Paris. Greetings from the Warp, correct? Yeah, so this is a this is a sample list of one that I have made, and it will tell you where I think the meta is at. Yeah, this is where your mind space is right now. Yeah, so my lord is is on a dragon, um, and he has got a charm shield um, because it's five points, and it means I might be able to deflect a cannonball if someone's going to put something nasty on me before he's in combat as he's as he's charging mm -hmm. off. Um, he's also got an item um, which gives you a debuff to using your strength. If you get additional strength from weapons, like great weapons or lances, you can't use them against him, and he can't use his against you. But it doesn't matter because the dragon is going to eat you for breakfast, and your lances are just now made of cardboard. So um, that's that's you know what I'm looking at negating someone getting the charge on him and getting those bonuses on the charge for their for their strength and armor piercing um next i've got a tree man ancient who is my level four wizard because i want my level four wizard to survive and to deal a bit of combat damage mm. um so again it makes them quite survivable gives them a lot of toughness uh, makes them a threat i don't actually know if that is better than having them loan on foot um, next to a unit because a tree man ancient has got a big target on their head. So is the tree man ancient a large target, Dad? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. So I actually think that's probably not not the best choice there. Um, but I said this is like a sample list. Yeah. And then my core: two units of ten glade guard, two units of five scouts, one unit of glade riders, and um, the glade riders ambush. So. Very small MSU style. If you catch me, I don't have any banners. You're not going to get any points for capturing banners from me. You're going to get 75 points for a unit of deep wood scouts. And also, they're going to fire and flee if you try and charge them. So they will shoot you. They've got um, hagbane tips, so yeah. they are, they're poisoned, and you probably won't catch them anyway. So a lot of points denial, a lot of leading people around the table, a lot of if you catch me, you're not getting the banners. Again, we're talking about previously, we're talking about making sure you get your points worth. So I'm not taking a banner in that unit because I'm not going to survive any combat. I don't need the plus one combat resolution and I'm not going to give you a free yeah. 50 points. That, um, that's what won you the game against me by six points. <laughs> yeah. I killed off every single one of your unit apart from a tree man, but you captured my banners and it gave you enough points to get the victory. Yeah. <laughs> Um, in special, I've got my Wild Riders, so we're, we're talking about mop-up and things like that later on in the game, making sure you get your charges. They are the thing that has the initiative and the hard hitting, um, and they're going to get that charge, and that's what they're going to do there. And then for rare, I've got two more tree men. So they are they are stubborn, they are tough, They can res we were doing the math hammer on it, they can receive a charge from a lance with 10 guys in there, and they they prop they won't break the first turn you won't kill them then you're held up against them then then in come you know all the nasties the wild riders so i think there's a better version of this list um, i think yeah. the, i think the tree man ancient probably is the weak point i probably want more magic missiles as you're coming in um, and i said i am working on a version of the list that's got sisters of the thorn and and all those kinds of things and they will do a bit more damage to you um, but i'm not um, going to go into all the other lists that i've written but that's one that i i just wanted to share it with jeremy because i thought it would annoy him and that's where i found it because it's three <laughs> it's three tree men and a dragon and two that's wild riders and the yeah. rest is like arcane bodkin arrows so that's kind of where my head's at are you tough enough to weather the charge are you stubborn will you be able to fight back do you have rend and stomps are you have you got oh, something that's going to get into the charge you know all the, that kind of stuff so that's kind of where my head at yeah is that so my concern is with the wild um the wild riders is now it's not a case there is no restraining with frenzy so there is the potential for them to be pulled out of position quite easily now nah, because they're behind a wood and they're miles away and they can't see anything and then they move up later on in the game yeah okay so you're you're waiting until like turn 
two turn well turn three turn four to start deploying these yeah yeah and trying to keep them out of harm's way in the meantime it depending it depends on the games then it depends on the scenario if someone's got you know because they're still going to be great up the flank yeah so if someone's got a soft flank i'll deploy them up the flank and i'll, I'll start getting into that stuff i just want them to, to kill stuff and cause mayhem and that's fine but you're right previously i used them a lot more surgically and i'll probably keep a unit back just for that um but yeah i hope that that kind of has got you thinking about your own list as i said i don't think that is the list that i will take i just think it's an example of what you can do now um the games workshop has imposed a limit if you can't take any more than three of the same kind of unit um i think people are talking quite a lot now about doing 1999 points instead of 2000 points because it'll stop the double dragon um which I think probably is a good choice. Um, mm. Depends how far the community wants to go with comping I, and things yeah. like that. Yeah, I but. think that's like let's just do a year of tournaments and see where the the competitive scene lies before yeah. we start coming up with one thousand nine hundred ninety nine point tournaments. Yeah, exactly that. Um, let's see where we go. You know, the, these this is a rule set that needs the community to play test it and that's what we're going to do yeah our corner, playing through our games and eventually you know we will get to hopefully a more refined edition but hopefully that's kind of got you thinking about some things that are going on in the game at the minute um you know these are some of the things that we've noticed in, in the game we played and and for through watching battle reports and, and listening to the community and, and that's where we go but when we go to our tournament wish us luck <laughs> yeah. and, and, uh, and most important if you have had any experiences playing competitive games just let us know let us know what your mm, takes are yeah and the more we know the better we might do at this tournament we're going to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right well thank you very much um please like and subscribe if you enjoyed and we will catch you next time